Welcome to MOOC course on introduction to proteogenomics. To enable proteomics researchers to interactively explore the acquired data matrices of quantified proteins or post translation modifications and to facilitate an integrative set of analysis tools, the Broad Institute team has developed a software known Protege which is proteomics tool set for integrative data analysis. Protege is primarily developed for the proteomics platform and now it is open access for the broader audience. Protege streamlines the entire proteomic data analysis pipeline, provides an intuitive interface for the lab researchers to analyze and explore proteomics data sets and ensure the reproducible data analysis by the keeping track of workflows and various parameters. Today we have Dr. D. R. Mani who is going to conduct a hands on session on Protege. In the first session he will primarily focus on installation of Protege and explaining its various parameters. Next he will show how to load data sets and choose annotation. He will also demonstrate running the analysis and then exploring results. So, let us welcome Dr. D. R. Bani for today's hands on session on Protege. If you have installed Protege and uh, it went through completely, you will have a page that looks like this in your web browser. So, that is the tool. So, the, the history of this is I was, I've talked about t-tests and moderated t-tests and f-tests uh, like two component normalization and uh, a lot of these things that you would apply to pretty much any project that you work on. So previously in our group um, I had all these uh, um, tools written up as R code and then people would ask me when they have a project to run it and some of the a uh, more adventurous people would take my code and run it in R themselves and kind of work on their project. And then uh, after Karsten joined, we figured that it would be a good idea to make a, to a tool that it is easy to use, uh, encapsulate all the algorithms that our group thinks that we should use on a regular basis and then make it available in such a way that anybody can use it. And they would need to come to us only if they are uh, experiment or project did not fall into the standard set of uh, uh, tests and uh, analysis that you would do. There are several lot of those, but uh, a large fraction of uh, projects in our group kind of just use Prodigy and then they have their results which they send to their collaborators and they look at it and say which is biologically relevant or look at other follow up experiments and so forth. So, this is a tool that we use at the broad. Uh, it is also freely available for anybody to use anywhere. Uh, it is available on GitHub, so you can download it and use it which is what all of you are doing now. Um, and I will just quickly go through uh, how to use the uh, tool. The first thing we want to do is um, load a data set. So, in the hands on part on Piazza there was a data set that I had put up. Uh, if you can download it or get it uh, or if you have already gotten it then uh, we can try to uh, load the data set into uh, uh, Prodigy. So, the first thing you need to do is load the data set and choose any annotations that you want to use for your analysis and then you go and do the analysis. So, loading the data set is, is the first part and very essential part you can do an analysis without it. So, do most people have what we need? Okay. Yes. So, the data set is uh, the, uh, the you can see the extension is dot gct. So, gct stands for gene cluster text it is a, a format that uh, we came up at the broad. The cool thing about this is not only does this have the data table it also has sample annotations and gene or protein annotations included in the table. So, you have the data and additional rows and columns that provide annotations. Uh, the it is basically a text delimited file which you can open in excel if you ignore the top two lines. So, if you ask excel to open it as a text file you can see the table 
the top two lines are a description of how many annotation columns there are and how many data columns there are. So that is only for software that reads it. But for you, you can ignore those two and just look at it. If you want to take your data and create a GCT file, there is a broad software called Morpheus. So if you go to Google and search for Morpheus, Well, it's taking a while, but the, the thing is Morpheus can read a lot of different formats. So it can read comma separated text files, all kinds of formats and then write out GCT 1.3. And once you read it into Morpheus, if you want, you can add annotations. You can add annotations from a separate file or in a given file you can say these rows or these columns are my annotations. And then you can kind of uh, uh, get everything set up in Morpheus and you can export it as a GCT 1.3 file and then you can read it into Prodigy. Prodigy also can read other formats but if you have GCT 1.3 it is easy to uh, say which uh, annotations you want to use because the annotations are included in it. Otherwise including annotations is a little more complex and I will not go into it today. So in the slides I have tried to pictorially display what we need to do but I will actually do it on the screen. So you click on browse on the left side, you will get a file browser. In the file browser you pick the data set that you want to use. So I am going to pick uh, DRM hands on data and you just say open. So it will say upload complete and then uh, just wait a couple of seconds you will get a new screen. So it says what type of data file it found, it says found GCT 1.3. It says what the samples are and how many, uh, so these are like the sample labels and it says how many times it found the sample. So ideally you want sample labels to be unique and so you want the frequency to be 1. Now here on the left it is showing all the columns, uh, annotation columns that it found in the GCT 1.3 file. So you can see there is the PAM50 status for the cancers for samples. ER, PR, HER2 status, P53 mutation status and so forth. And there is also some other experimental details. So we have experiment number which is the TMT plex in which it was run. There is the channel which is the sorry this is all iTrack data. So it is the iTrack experiment and the iTrack channel that it was run. So all those are included in the data set. So for this um, uh, uh, kind of hands on let us pick PAM50 as the annotation that we want to use. So when you pick PAM50, it shows you the various levels in PAM50 and how many samples there are. So it says there are 26 basal samples, 18, 19 HER2 samples and so on. And you can also see we have 3 normal samples in there which were actually normal breast samples that were included in the study and it shows that those also. So I will just start over again, so I think some people wanted me to repeat. So this is the Prodigy opening page, you click on browse. So it looks like in you, you have to wait for the full file to download. If you do not have the full file and you try to load it, I think Prodigy is going to complain that the file was not complete or there were not enough rows or you will get an error and Prodigy will close. So you have to wait for the file to fully download and once it is downloaded then you you can load it into Prodigy and you will get to the screen that says uh, you want to pick a annotation column. For which one? For mutation. Yeah, 0 means not mutated, 1 means mutated. So we, the, you, you, can, you can also designate on what type of mutation or which site was mutated but that only results in uh, subsets that are way too small to analyze. So we just used mutated or not mutated. And I think there is also a NA which is missing. So for some of the mutation status if you look at it there will be 3 groups, 0 that means it is not mutated, 1 means it is mutated, NA means we do not know. So remember we have 3 normal samples, for normal samples we did not measure whether the thing was mutated or not. And so for those um, we basically mark it as NA. So when you do an analysis you want to exclude those samples and work only on things that are mutated or not mutated. I will show you how to do it but uh, let us just see if everyone is 
in reasonable shape. Yeah. So there is a way to look at the data in Prodigy. So once we get there, I'll show you. Otherwise, I can show you the data separately. Okay. You can open the GCT file in Excel also. No, that I see. Yeah. But how you reach to the, that GCT oh, file? Oh, so that we use Spectramill. So we use Spectramill to create the log ratios. Okay, so and then we went through normalization. Okay. Well, you can do normalization with this if you want. But you need at least output from the Spectramill. So or we use Spectramill. You can use anything. So Spectramill take the input of uh, raw mass spec uh, data. I tracked it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So if you oh. have any raw data, I track data. All the data for that paper should be on the Nature website. Okay, it's all the data. It's all there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> so let's actually. Uh, yeah. So we need to say okay here. Or? Yeah. I'll, I'll get to that. We'll. And another file is coming, sir. Just. Uh, Yes, this one. Yes, that one. How to see this one? I'll show you. All the CSV file, GCT file, and this file can be. So we can convert Excel into CSV, and yeah, we can you can use it. But the annotation is a little <coughs> tricky, like I like I mentioned. So. <coughs> yeah. So we use QC pass fail to decide which one to include and which ones to exclude. So in the breast cancer paper, there were a set of samples that we excluded. So yeah. those were marked as QC fail. So what is the criteria that was put? That you have to read the paper. It's relatively complex, so I don't want to go into it so now. We can same. talk later if you want. So yeah. both and same, there are two QC status. Yeah, I think that was because uh, of some processing. I think it was included multiple times. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. I think it's possible one might have 0, 1, the other one has QC fail, QC pass, something like that. So. Protege is completely based on R programming. So we need to learn a basic workflow, how to run the scripts to get the wave interface of Protege. Today, I would like to show you a very basic workflow, how to install R and R studio and to run the scripts that required for Protege. This hands on is only for the people who do not have R installed in their system. First we need to install R, the version is 3.5.1 and R studio. So on the basis of your system compatibility, if you are using Linux, Mac or Windows, you need to download R on the basis of that. So I will show all the uh, downloading and installation based on Windows. So you need to download R from here and R studio from this website. In the uh, while downloading the R studio, you need to keep in mind that you need to go for the free version that is available here. After downloading both the R and the R studio, you need to choose the installers on the basis of whatever operating system you are using. So now, so after downloading both R and R studio, we need to first install the R. We need to keep in mind that we will only follow the default installation rather any kind of customized installation. The, the installation might take some time. So after the completion of the first installation, we need to do the installation for the R studio. So here also I will recommend that do not go for any kind of customized installation, rather just click all the uh, tabs as a default installation and install the R studio also. So while the softwares are getting installed, the Protege Broad Institute in GitHub. So this is the software Protege. So from here you will get a couple of informations about the Protege and even the slides that you will be needing to understand and to install or to upload the data and what kind of data format you need to do the analysis in Protege. So I will recommend you to go through the complete web page to understand and to get important information about the tool. The kind of data set required for to run Protege is in P into N matrix. So where P is the features that is that can be maybe may the number of proteins or genes and N is the number of samples. So this kind of small small information you will get after reading uh, this software web page. The installation of RStudio also got completed 
as Protege uh, is a R based software, but after giving some basic uh, command, uh, it will give you a web interface. So, most of the R based command which is giving web interface to you are always scripted on Shiny. So, first we need to install the Shiny packages. So, for installing any packages in uh, R, we need to keep in mind that the basic code for installing is installed.packages and in inverted comma you need to give the name of the software. So, let, let us try to install the Shiny first. So, as you can see after just writing install that is coming in the drop down menu. So, from here just you can choose the installed packages and here in inverted comma you can write Shiny and click enter. So, as you can see after uh, clicking enter it has start downloading the uh, package, uh, packages for Shiny. So, it, it will take some time and after the package get installed we will try to install the Protege software. The installation might take some time. So, finally the uh, Shiny package got in installed. So, now we will try to install Protege software. So, to install the Protege software we need to write as we have already installed Shiny now all the command will be based on Shiny only. So, let us see how to install Protege software. So, the basic command for installing the Proti software is shiny 2 colons. So, the basic command for running the um, Proti software is need to have the shiny and followed by 2 colon then run github protege and broad institute. So, after that we will click enter and it will show that protege is getting downloaded. So, it will take some time sometimes it might take 10 minutes for some user it might take more than an hour. So, after the completion of the Protege software you will find there will be a web interface of Protege will be opening and from there you can upload your data the data that is available in the Google Drive link that has already been shared to you. So, after completion of the Protege installation the web interface will look like this and in the left hand side there is a browse option where you need to click browse and you need to upload your data set. For some user there might some error comes, but to troubleshoot the error you need to read the error what, what is the problem that is coming. If it is something that is linked with installing a software just writing install dot packages inverted comma and the name of the software which the error asking for and click enter you will see that it will help you to download the Protege. So, thank you.
I hope today's session was useful and you were introduced more details about Protegy. You must have got now a fair bit of idea how to go to the Broad Institute portal and explore the software Protegy. The session of annotation is a crucial step before running the analysis. In the next hands on session, we will learn more about different options like log to transformation, normalization, data filtering and test selection in Protegy. Thank you.